Welcome back to TechNet Radio. In today's episode, we hear from Abe Ray and Bart Robertson as they discuss how Microsoft IT is developing applications on the Windows Azure platform. Listen in as they go in-depth with the three main business benefits for developing applications in the cloud, as well as how Windows Azure is optimizing the online social and digital media experience at Microsoft. Abe, the mic is yours. Thank you for joining us on how Microsoft IT is developing platforms of Windows Azure. My name is Abe Ray, and I'm a Principal Program Manager in Microsoft IT Relationship Experience Division, or RxD. And I'm responsible for the end-to-end -end engineering delivery of the Social and Video Experience Platforms, or SXP and VXP, which are built and hosted on Windows Azure. Joining me today is my colleague, Bart Robertson. Hi, I'm Bart Robertson, and I'm the Cloud Architect and Lead Developer responsible for SXP. Um, I'm excited to talk today about what we've done with Windows Azure. We've been live for about seven months now and have had some really great experiences. Absolutely. So Bart and I are going to talk about our enterprise level, real world experiences with Windows Azure at Microsoft, focusing on three key benefits of del developing platforms with Windows Azure. The first one being, you know, platforms built on Windows Azure are highly available. And we're realizing up to six nines uptime up from about 91, 99.1% with previous social platforms. And two, you know, developing and deploying on Windows Azure is cost effective, and we've reduced our costs over 15x over similar on-premise developed platforms. I think the third point is that Windows Azure increases engineering agility by reducing dev, test, UAT, and production environment provisioning from what we're seeing in five weeks to what, about 30 minutes or less per environment. This is what we call instant self-provisioning of environments. So first, we're going to give you a little bit of the solution overview and talk about some of the results that we've realized to date. It really feels, uh, Bart was saying, the past 10 months, Bart and I have been focused on developing and delivering social media capabilities on Windows Azure, leveraged by key Microsoft.com sites like Slash Cloud, uh, WAC Showcase, and even a Facebook application called Peri PowerPoint Karaoke. And more recently, we're focused on replatforming the video experience platform, or VXP, on Windows Azure as well. Now, SXP, is a platform as a service and provides onboarding sites web services capabilities in the cloud, including comments, ratings, RSS feed management, as well as a Silverlight-based curation, moderation, administration, and reporting user interface to sites like the cloud. VXP, in conjunction with MSN Videos, provides video publishing and content management capabilities to sites like Showcase. To kind of talk a lot of our, our, our agility, SXP v1 shipped in April on Azure, v2 shipped in August, SXP version 2.5 in October, uh, 2.6 in December, and we're looking to sh ship SXP v3 in February of 2011, and even VXP 1.0 on Windows Azure in January 2011. So Bart, to start with, can you please provide our audience with a brief technical overview of SXP and how we leverage Windows Azure? Sure. SXP is a multi-tenant web service, and by multi-tenant, I mean we have the capabilities to onboard multiple partners. W one of the key benefits of the cloud is scale. And one key way to get scale is by um, creating multi-tenants so that you're not deploying a site for every instance, but you deploy one site and you're able to support multiple instances on it. Um, Microsoft.com is one of the largest corporate web presences in the world, and so that's our biggest customer. And, and there are dozens of sites on Microsoft.com that will take advantage of, of SXP to provide comments and ratings and RSS feed aggregation. Um, our first partner, or tenant, uh, is the video showcase site available at Microsoft.com slash showcase. And this is where we host about 10,000 different videos mm -hmm. across Microsoft. And so our marketers have the, the capability to put the videos out there, uh, to track who's watching them. Uh, and what SXP provides is the ability to comment and rate those videos. Sure. Um, being a, a global company, where uh, showcase is available in over 20 languages, mm -hmm. and so SXP had to be able to support those languages. We provide automatic spam and profanity filtering across those different languages, uh, and we provide the ability to comment and rate on, on those capabilities. We also provide a Silverlight management tool. Nice. 
Um, and what this does is this allows our, our partners to go into the site and it allows them to manage the comments, manage the ratings, mm -hmm. report on the different information, find out which video is getting the highest ratings, which video is getting the most views, which video is getting the most comments, so that they can use that information and feed that sure. information back into the production process. So if they have a video that's getting really good results, they can produce more videos like that. If okay. they have a video that's not getting positive results, then they won't produce more videos like that. So it really gives them uh, some real-time feedback on Excellent. what our customers think of the work they're doing. Um, in our November release, we also released uh, RSS aggregation capabilities. And what we found is that there's a lot of content available across Microsoft and, and other sites, and we want to repurpose that content sure. to build uh, applications that, that leverage that content in different ways. And so that's what our RSS feed aggregation is able to do. So we give the capability for any site on Microsoft.com to consume and repurpose and use any RSS feed available. And this is content, I think, from uh, you know LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, and those different areas, correct? Yeah, that's a great point. So uh, the first partner that we have live that's using our RSS capabilities is our cloud site. Uh, it's available at Microsoft.com slash cloud. A couple months ago, Steve Ballmer did a presentation at, at the University of Washington where he said, you know, referring to Microsoft and the cloud, we're all in. Mm -hmm. And so we just launched a big cloud marketing campaign, and, and that marketing campaign is supported on Microsoft.com by the Microsoft.com slash cloud site. It's available in about 30 languages around the world. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to have what they call a conversation. So they wanted fresh content. They wanted to pull content, not just from Microsoft, but from other media outlets, from important bloggers, uh, even from things like YouTube and Twitter. And they wanted to pull that content and repurpose that content. And that's what SXP provides on the back end, is we provide the ability to go out to all these different sites, pull the content in, we provide the ability for uh, the curators, uh, the site curators, to go in and select which content they want to use and then publish that automatically to the different cloud sites around the world. And so we make it very easy for them to leverage technology uh, to keep the content fresh um, and, and to pull content from other sources as well. Now, sometimes that the, the remarks in those comments are positive sure. and sometimes they're not positive, <laughs> yes. right? But it's real important um, in, in this, this RSS world, it's real important to be open and honest about your conversations. So some of the things that get approved are not necessarily 100% positive, but it gives you a real world implementation of what you're seeing in on the internet in general. Absolutely. So we've been running with the Showcase site with SXP on Windows Azure since April. Right. And then we had the Cloud Power site with SXP on Windows Azure since November. Uh, so what results have we seen to date, Bart? Yeah, so we started, we launched in April. Um, we did a couple releases and we launched our RSS capabilities um, in, uh, actually it was late October, early November. We just came off our best month in our history, which was the month of November. We were actually over six nines wow. for the month. Um, which, if you've if you've ever done systems where you're trying mm -hmm. to trying to get nines, nines get very very expensive, and we were able to accomplish over six nines uh, for the month. For our fiscal year, which began July 31st, we're over four nines. We're actually at 99.997 wow. um, percent availability, which is huge. And we're doing this without any special coding on our part. Sure. Um, we have a little bit of caching that we've implemented, but for the most part we're, we're leveraging Windows Azure and SQL Azure to provide the availability to us, which we think is very important. In November, we did almost 6 million transactions, 5.96 wow. million, yeah. which is about 200,000 transactions per day. Nice. During the month of November, um, we had three transactions that failed. Uh, and we measure, it's, it's an important point to make, we measure our uptime at the transaction level. So we're as granular on our uptime as we can possibly be. Uh, and we had three transactions out of six million fail in November, which is, which is awesome. Um, on top of that, we're running at about 10% utilization on our Windows yes. Azure implementation. So we have a lot of headroom. We could probably go well over a million transactions a month with our current uh, Windows Azure uh, footprint size, which is only costing us about $1,000 a month. That's, a, that's phenomenal. So, you know, just the, the takeaway, I think it, you're, I'm hearing Azure works, you know, it scales quickly and yeah. it saves us money, yes? Absolutely. That, that's amazing. So, you know, when you compare this to our previous competitive on-premise uh, social media solution, you know, that SXP's replaced, how has Windows Azure made us more cost competitive, though? Well, the, the previous uh, solution that we used for providing comments and ratings on Showcase was running us about $12,000 a mm -hmm. month just in hosting costs. 
Um, on top of that, we had dedicated support engineers right. um, that, that were necessary to keep the site running, um, you know, from the infrastructure all the way up through the application level. Uh, so we were able to cut out about two, two and a half uh, engineers from an operations mm -hmm. perspective, which lowers our operations cost quite a bit. As we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. the, the current SXP solutions costing us about $1,000 a month. Um, we're leveraging the exact same operations team, the exact same operations process that the rest of Microsoft.com uses, so we get scalability. Um, we, don't, we didn't actually add any operations heads, uh, but we did allocate approximately a half an operations sure. head uh, to social experience platform. And again, we expect we should be able to go well over a million transactions before we have to increase that. We're also using the same ticketing system, we're using the same escalation process, okay. we're using the same support process that the rest of Microsoft.com uses. So we didn't have to go and create a bunch of, of new support capabilities. Um, by moving these capabilities, the social capabilities to the cloud, uh, we can easily launch composite solutions like nice. you were talking about PowerPoint Karaoke. Yep. It's a composite solution that leverages uh, SXP for comments and ratings, it leverages Facebook, uh, it leverages uh, video, it leverages all these capabilities together into an application. And we were able to develop that application in a very, very short amount of time, get it live, it's a really cool application, we're getting a lot of positive feedback sure. on it. And by moving these capabilities to the cloud, we get the ability to build these composite applications. Uh, a key takeaway here, um, and, and this is really important when you start talking about OpEx versus CapEx, mm -hmm. is with Windows Azure, you pay for what you use. That's There's right. no big upfront CapEx expenditure. You don't have to allocate a budget. You don't have to get approval. You don't have to order hardware. You don't have to rack and stack. You just go to Windows Azure, you subscribe, and in half an hour to an hour, you're up and running on the internet ready to go, um, and you only pay for what you use. So if you need to scale, uh, scale up for a month, you scale up for a month. If you need to scale back down, you scale back down. You don't have this huge rack of, of servers sitting there um, that's, that aren't being used. Well, you know, we talked a lot about the business sides of, of Windows Azure. Let's see, you know, for our technical audience, let's just delve, deal, delve into the architecture a little bit. Can you describe the SXP architecture hosted on Windows Azure, what that looks like for us? Sure, and, and we have a slide that you should be seeing um, that, that shows this in, in a pictorial fashion. The, the key point to SXP, the, the, the main part of SXP, is the web services that you see in the bottom right of the screen. Now these are all running on Windows Azure mm -hmm. and using SQL Azure as a data storage mechanism. This is, this is where all the real work is done. This is a, a REST-based web service that we use. Now currently, all of our customers, if you look on the left-hand side, all of our tenants or all of our partners are actually running in the Microsoft.com data center. So this is a hybrid on-premise, off-premise solution. Uh, the Microsoft.com data center is a, is a Microsoft corporate data center where we run all of our web servers. And that's where all of our, our partners run their web services that, uh, that talk to us and render the page for the user. We also, as we talked about earlier, have a couple Silverlight applications for managing um, the the feeds and for managing the comments and ratings and, and general administrative capabilities. Um, from an operations perspective, we use System Center Operation Manager uh, to monitor. There's a management pack available for System Center that will monitor a Windows mm -hmm. Azure app. And, and so what we've done is we've taken that management pack and we've folded it into our existing System Center sure. operations capabilities. Again, we didn't have to go create something new. We just leveraged what is currently there. And so System Center plugs into that and we pull that information. Microsoft.com also uses a, a third-party product called Keynote. And what Keynote does is Keynote provides us monitoring from around the world. I believe we're in 23 different locations right. around the world um, on every continent in, in all the major cities. And what this tells us is it tells us the availability of the data center from different places in the world. Uh, and what we're seeing, remember, our, all of our customers today live in the Microsoft.com data center. Uh, but the reason we're using Keynote is because we are moving web properties sure. to Windows Azure pretty aggressively. And what we're seeing from a Keynote perspective over the last seven months is we're seeing the same level of availability on the Windows Azure, da Azure data centers as we're seeing on the normal Microsoft.com data centers. So we're seeing really, really good availability there. And that's, that's good feedback uh, you know, to the product group. It's good feedback as to IT as we're moving more and more applications to Windows Azure. It tells us that we can definitely move web-based applications to Windows Azure and get the same kind of availability right. that we have uh, today. We also have a couple other pieces here. Um, we use SQL Azure very heavily for multi-tenant. 
And what we've chosen to do from our multi-tenant capabilities is we've actually chosen to create a database per tenant or a database per partner. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can achieve multi-tenancy. We like the database um, per tenant concept because it allows us to scale. Sure. And, um, you know, one of the one of the issues when SQL Azure first came out, uh, you know, almost a year ago now, one of the issues was the size of the database that's available, and they've done a great job of increasing that size, and they're only going to continue to increase that over time. But what we find is that keeping the databases small and keeping the databases isolated has helped us from an availability perspective, mm -hmm. it's helped us from a performance perspective. So we're really glad we made that decision to scale one database um, per tenant. Now, if you uh, if your databases are very very small, mm -hmm. then that might not make sense. But ours are big enough, you know, that the, the smallest um, SQL Azure database you can get is one gig, and ours are are well over that amount. So we're in pretty good shape there from a scaling perspective. Nice. Um, the other thing we leverage is we leverage uh, Windows Azure Storage, and this is leveraged for the diagnostics information. So Windows Azure has the capabilities to dump information to what's called Windows Azure Diagnostics, and that gets moved automatically from the virtual machines that are running your web application that gets moved to Windows Azure Storage. And so that's where all of our diagnostics information is picked up. That's where System Center picks up its information. That's where our dashboard picks up its information. Uh, and then the last thing we have in the picture is um, something that we call uh, Azure Monitor or SXP Monitor. And this is just a little ping application. It, uh, it's a lot like Keynote, except mm -hmm. it's running in the data center. And so this is what we use to give us our application availability because there's no network between it and our application. Right, so we built synthetic transactions into our application and uh, Azure Monitor pings those transactions and so it tells us uh, second by second if we're up or down. Nice. It also tells us what our performance is so we, we track our average response time uh, so that we know if we're having any kind of performance issues or if we need to spin up multiple uh, new instances of Windows Azure. Right, and, and you know, thinking about those environments, you know, I've done enough deployments, you know, when you, when you deploy on virtual machines or physical hardware, it takes sometimes weeks to procure and provision some of that hardware and set it up. Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit how uh, Windows Azure has enabled SXP, the engineering and the operation teams, to provision environments more quickly? Yeah, I think that's a good point you make, uh, and we talked about this a little bit earlier. You know, with with Windows Azure, there is no capex, so there is no, uh, you know, requesting budget to order hardware, ordering the hardware, racking and stacking, getting the base OS laid on, you know, and then getting okay, now it's ready for your application. Right. Uh -huh. uh, there's also no patching necessary because Windows Azure handles all of that for you automatically. Um, so it, it's been a, a great. Uh, change from that perspective. Now there are some things that are a little bit different, um, but once you learn those differences and embrace those differences, they're actually um, actually really good. What we do is our, our IT team works really closely with our business groups, um, and we have a chargeback model. So for everybody that we onboard to SXP, we have a small chargeback, and, and this is to fund operations capabilities. It's right. also to fund roadmap capabilities. We have a, have a big roadmap of functions and features that we want to put into the system, and we fund that via the, the chargeback model. Um, one of the things that, is, that it has forced us to do as an IT team is it has forced us to be very, very agile, right? right? Because the, the, the issue that we run into um, is you know if we have a, mar a big marketing campaign coming up, that marketing campaign is going to go no matter what happens. If, if IT can't be ready, the business is going to find another way. And, and so we, we end up with these things called shadow applications, which you know every IT department ends right. up with, with some number of, of those. We've actually found that Windows Azure helps us be more agile, which helps reduce some of those uh, shadow applications. Well, I think to some extent also, we've got these global development teams now that most IT organizations are familiar with. We have right. folks in India, folks in China, for, folks throughout the US. So can you talk a little bit about you know, how this uh, provisioning of environments has enabled various teams globally to spin up the environments they need. You know, talk a little bit about the team and team structures that people are familiar with. So, the SXP team today consists of uh, you and I in the U.S., so you're in Redmond and I'm in Texas. Um, then we have about 20 developers in India. Uh, we have testers, about 10 testers in China. And then we have three operations um, leads who are here in the United States. We mm -hmm. have a, a operations PM, uh, then we have uh, a database operations right. lead, and we have a, a Windows Azure compute uh, operations lead. So that's what the team looks like. Um, what we've been able to do is, is because Windows Azure has data centers around the world, 
um, you know, the, the guys in India or the guys in China don't have to pay the penalty uh, of coming to the United States right. for everything like they would in, in, a, in a normal environment. We're able to spin up Windows Azure environments in any data center around the world. We can spin them up in San Antonio, or we can spin them up in Chicago, or we can spin them up in Europe, or we can spin them right. up in Asia. Um, you know, we can, we can do global redundancy, but, but even more important than that, we can put the development and test environments close to the people doing sure. the work which improves their uh, experience and also makes them more productive. And the nice thing about Windows Azure, and we, we talked about this a couple times already, is you know you don't have to order hardware, mm -hmm. right? If you need a new subscription, it's a very, very short process. Sure. You spin those up, you use them when you're done with them, you spin them back down and you don't pay for them anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been really, really good for us. We also have a sandbox environment we set up. Uh, again, we fund ourselves via a chargeback model and the way you charge back is you get new new customers and you get new partners. And the only way to get a new partner is to give them some place that they can go and play sure, with sure. it. And so Windows Azure has made that really easy for us to do. And, and, and again, we didn't have to go to anybody and order hardware or order software. We just uh, simply went out and spun up a new Windows Azure instance and were able to provide the sandbox uh, to them. Um, you know, we cut our, our time at, on the previous version of, of Showcase it was anywhere from four to six weeks if we needed exactly. to add a new server. Yeah. And, and now it's a matter of minutes, you know, maybe 30 minutes, an hour tops. We have a new environment up and running. We've actually used this a couple times. You know, we ran into some bugs. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's code uh, has bugs, including ours. And we ran into some bugs, and, and, and we couldn't duplicate them in our test environment. The only place we were seeing them is in production. So we spun up a whole new production environment, deployed the entire application in the production environment, and then spun up another environment that generated transactions exactly. against it to see if we could figure out what was going on. And sure enough, we were able to duplicate it from that perspective. So we were able to, to close in on the bug by doing that. Now, if you take that in a traditional model, right, you got to get the CapEx approval, you got to order the servers, yep. you got to find the space, you got to rack it, you got to stack it, you mm -hmm. got to get the networking. You know, and, and there's a huge amount of cost involved there, but for us, it was a very small amount of cost. We spun up a couple environments, ran them for a couple days, spun them down, and we were done with them. So that has been a really Really, really good feature of Windows Azure. That's truly that pay for what you use and then uh, you know redeploy it. That's fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely. So, can you go into a little bit more detail on, on how the team builds and deploys in each environment? You know, thinking specifically uh, with the production, how you can switch over with a new production release without impacting those transactions. Yeah, and this is actually one of the um, one of the cooler features of Windows Azure and, and something that we use a lot. So, Windows Azure has this this capability to do what's called a VIP swap, or we call it the big red button. Uh -huh. um, and, and so basically what you have is, is on a Windows Azure service, you have two different instances running at once. Mm -hmm. One of them is running as the production instance, right. and one of them is running as the staging instance. And you push the big red button and it, swip, it switches them. And so what this has allowed us to do is, is mm -hmm. a couple things. Number one, um, it's allowed us to not miss any transactions when we upgrade to a new system, which is which is huge. I mean, I, I've been doing this for 30 years, and, and we've built systems where we could do this before, sure. but it was a lot of effort on our part, and, and it was something that you always had to maintain, and it was something you had to keep up with date. We get it out of the box with Windows Azure, which is great. So you have this ability to switch these uh, deployments very quickly without, without losing it. Um, the other thing that it gives you is the ability to switch back. Absolutely. Right. I mean, how many times have you deployed a new version that you thought was tested only to find out right. that, oops, I missed something. So that rollback capability. Right, the rollback capability, right. exactly. Again, it's as simple as, as running a script in our case or clicking the big red button and having it switch it back. Nice. Um, and Windows Azure handles everything under the covers for you so that you don't have to, you don't have to do anything special to take advantage of that, which, is, which to me is a great feature of Windows Azure. It's helped us out a lot. It's helped us go, um, you know, release the versions as, as frequently as we've been able to, which has improved our agility, which results in very positive wow. feedback from our business. That, that's just that's simply fantastic. So how do you see movement to Windows Azure? How do you feel that transformed from a team and organization perspective, thinking of our development, our test team, our operations? Can you talk to the, to the yeah. audience a little bit? How did that move to Azure transform the teams? Well, it, the first thing that I, I would encourage you to do as, a, as an engineering team or a development team, the first thing I would con encourage you to do is, is to take design for operations very seriously. Sure. Um, Windows Azure is less than a year old. It's only been in, it hasn't even been in production a year yet. So it's not as mature as a lot of the on-premise um, environments are. Uh, and certainly if you're adopting it for the first time, it's not as mature as your on-premises. And, and operations on Windows Azure 
are different. And it's not a bad thing, they're just different. So it's very, very important, step one, that you design operations in there. So okay. leverage Windows Azure Diagnostics. Again, we talked about that earlier. Windows Azure has built-in capabilities so that if you log something, it can move it automatically to storage and System Center can pick that up and use sure. it. Your dashboard can pick that up and use it. Make heavy use of that. So make sure you design for operations. Make sure you log a lot. Um, the next thing you have to, to adjust to is Windows Azure has this concept of, of building packages mm -hmm. and deploying packages. And you know, as a longtime web developer, people are, are used to, oh, I'm going to tweak this configuration file or I'm going to yeah. tweak that file and, and it's only one file and so it's not a big deal. Uh, well, with Windows Azure, because it's all packaged together, that means you have to repackage and you mm -hmm. have to redeploy the package. Okay. The, the initial response from the operations team is, oh no, we're doing, right. a, we're doing a complete we redeploy that, you know, this is bad. It's not a bad thing. Again, all you changed is one configuration file. Windows Azure, by having this package, ensures consistency across all your instances. I mean, how many times have you been in a situation where you tweaked a configuration file on one server, but you forgot to tweak it on the rest right. of the farm, and you end up with uh, inconsistent environments? Yep. Um, you know, through five releases of, of Social Experience Platform, we haven't had a single inconsistent environment issue. I mean, we've certainly had bugs and we've certainly had issues, but we haven't had any issues because of an inconsistent environment, which has probably saved us, um, uh, you know, a number of hours just from a development and a test perspective. Mm -hmm. And again, when we go back to global development, um, particularly with the time zone in India versus the time zone in the U.S., I mean, uh, they're working while we're sleeping and we're sleeping um, you know while they're working and, and so it's kind of a 24-hour day sure. and if you have if you have this inconsistency from a configuration perspective you know your entire team in India can lose a whole day waiting on you to resolve Absolutely. it when you when you come back in the next morning so that's actually been really really good what about like monitoring event notification those sorts of items how, how is that different from what you can tell yeah well so again we um, purposely when we went in with this we engaged the operations team early um, we determined what we had in place today to monitor Microsoft.com, and we said, okay, now how can we hook Azure into this existing monitoring environment? And so we leveraged the System Center um, mm -hmm. capabilities, the System Center Management Pack for Windows Azure, um, and so we leveraged that to pull it into the, to the same reporting system, the same monitoring system, uh, the same trouble ticket system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when an event happens in Windows Azure, our level one operations guys don't really know it's Windows Azure. All they know is they get an event on their on their dashboard, mm -hmm. and it says, "Okay, in case of this event, do this." Um, they execute that command, or they execute, um, you know, the the script that's there. Uh, and if it succeeds, then they let it go. Which most of the time, for us, fortunately, it is it has been transient issues. We haven't really had a lot of you know long term downtime. Uh, so usually by the time it pops on the screen, it's already resolved itself. Windows Azure is already taken care of it. But on the few instances where that hasn't happened, then they have a list that says, okay, if that doesn't work, escalate to level two. Level two has a list of tasks again. Uh, and if that doesn't work, escalate to level three, and then that's when my phone rings. So, so what I'm hearing is we're able to transform both the engineering and the operations teams without really minimal impact and even leverage some of our existing assets in that same transition. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, we totally nice. leverage the existing processes. Absolutely. We totally leverage the existing infrastructure. Can you, uh, you know, instruct folks where they can go to learn a little bit more about SXP and some of the Windows Azure experiences? Sure. As you can see on the slide um, here, there are a couple great resources. You mentioned uh, a white paper. We have a white paper that we published uh, a couple months ago that talks in more detail about social experience platform and goes into more details of what is there. Uh, if you want to see Windows Azure in action, you can go to Microsoft.com slash showcase and see the video showcase that's being powered by uh, Windows Azure. Uh, you can also go to Microsoft.com slash cloud okay. and see the RSS feed aggregation. When you go to cloud, click on the cloud conversations page uh, and, and you'll see real-time information that that's, uh, keeps the data fresh. And again, both of these are available in multiple languages. We have about 30 different languages right. supported around the world. Um, there's also a great Windows Azure resource site on TechNet, so uh, technet.microsoft.com okay. is a great place to go for more information as well. Fantastic. So this has just been a phenomenal conversation, Bart. I wanted to thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks a lot.